that we're seeing. So that's what I want to see. I want to see a defined, solid approach coming out here from Immortals. They'll start off with a Felio. I just don't think Immortals is the like do something crazy team, right? When I look at these players, but I want them. Immortals is is to me. They are, let's 5v5, let's go late, let's look for scaling, you know? And, and that's kind of the identity that I think a lot of these players have had. Turtle has been a strong team fighter. You know, Xerxes is a really smart early game jungler. He maybe has a little bit more spice because he used to play uh, some things that were kind of less popular, like Hecarim wasn't being played a lot. And, you know, he's had his different looks uh, on the meta. But in general, like PoE has been the control mage, team fighting guy his whole career. That has been his bread and butter. And with the Ophelia's first pick, be interesting to see is the thresh going to get taken away because definitely if you don't take it destiny will grab it loves the hook champions it's such a strong pairing with the Aphelios, but Thresh plus Jinx is such an incredibly strong duo anyway. It's good with anyway. both of them. Like, uh, that's why I almost almost would have preferred. So if, if they're trying to set up specifically for this matchup of Nautilus and a Thresh, and if that's the matchup that you want, then sure. Um, but if, if you're just looking for a, a strong all-around duo, you can just first pick the Thresh and then take the Jinx or the Aphelios, and both are Whichever really, one really they don't. Pairings. Yeah. Exactly, but it was an instant lock on the Nautilus, so that leads me to believe that they're saying, okay, you're gonna go Thresh here, we're gonna answer it with the Nautilus, and we're gonna try to play aggressive into this. Because you have to remember, Thresh doesn't really play Aftershock these days. It's almost all Glacial Augment, which means you are a lot more squishy. Nautilus can go Aftershock and play for all ins if you want to look for that sort of style. Yeah. And you will win out on those trades just with the extra flat resistances that you get from the Aftershock as long as you can really connect with that Thresh. And both of our mid lane picks this game very much fit the players they are picked for. Victor, kind of the statement control mage in the current meta. Yeah. That's over there for Power of Evil. Bjergsen will once again be playing his Zillion that constantly wreaks havoc upon the LCS. It's, it's another one of those champions that, yeah, you're not surprised that Bjergsen picks Zillion, but no one else is playing no Zillion. No other person plays this champion. Exactly. Sorry for the two of you people out there who play Zillion. I apologize. <laughs> But nobody I mean, else in the LCS plays Zillion. Well, and even across all major regions, this will be the eighth Zillion pick total across all major regions, including, you know, the preseason tournaments and stuff, right? So almost not at all is this played. Four of those games, four of the eight are Pearson. <laughs> so he has been playing. He this. likes him some Zillion. He is incredibly strong on the pick. It is one of the best scaling champions in the game. It is one of the best enablers in the game. You already see Jinx, you see Zillion, you say, oh God, if they get to three items, it's gonna be hard it's because not. a champion who, who like Jinx, who can make the most out of that long range with the move speed. And when you're piloting that, you know, with a player like Hansama, who has such incredible mechanics, you can really get the most of that speed by sidestepping skill shots, by playing that line right on the very edge where you're in range and they can't quite hit you. And of course, the other big conversation about Zillion besides the speed is the ulti, right? The ability to get that free res. Yep. And generally what teams want to have against that is some AOE threat to make it so it's not just focusing onto one person and blowing them up. Something like a Nautilus ult catching somebody out doesn't really matter if Zillion brings them right back to life. Now, of course, Victor has some powerful AOE tools with the yeah. E, with the ulti. So but I, yeah, and I want to see them continue to build upon that to be able to deal with this. Team Liquid now thinking about maybe grabbing the jungler here next. It's Gwen and Renekton banned out by Immortals. It's Irelia and Jace banned out by TL. Lots of focus on those top lane champions. Yeah, now what, what I will say is I'm really excited for the last picks here because if they go Zin, that's super standard, but that means fifth pick for Bwipo. And Bwipo is not like a fifth pick Orin kind of guy. Oh, Bwip, no. Bwipo is usually going to look for something that either completely changes the composition or is really strong in the 1v1. Something that he can really get an edge on. He's not afraid to take picks that are not popular whatsoever in the meta. And if Immortals were to make a splash, I think it would be you know, in these next couple picks because Xerxes is one of the guys that is willing to take more risky picks. He's more of a less standard player. Kiana would be a pretty cool twist yeah. here. Yeah! Gonna get something aggressive in the jungle here from Xerxes. So we've already seen a couple of Assassin jungle games uh, from Golden Guardians. Pride Soccer brought out Kiana. He brought out Zed. Now we're gonna get to see Xerxes look on it. And it's gonna have to be a blind top. A lot of top lane bans come to mind already. So, you know, he could be looking towards, um, you know, something like a Graze that's, that's open. Could be looking towards a tank that's open. Okay, well, the Graves will be locked in. What's the answer here, Bwipo? 
How are we going to do this? Whippo, you already said he's not the Orn kind of the guy. He's not one of those red side fifth pick Renekton kind of guys. I want to see a Graves answer. I, and I think, you know, you can go carry here very easily with the composition, right? You have Zillion, it's more supportive champion. Guess you can do damage, but you don't have consistent damage. So taking a carry top to actually counter the Graves, I think works well with the composition. And hey, okay. There it is. Trindamir top here. Trindamir carry, carry likes champ. him some move speed. Mm -hmm. It's hard to kite. Shin's actually coming into this season. People yeah. thought they were going to come out of the gate strong with some strong carry players. We are now onto the game and some pretty interesting stuff already. So face rush on the victor. It's been almost airy exclusively, but this is super smart when you're playing against the victor. Uh, rather, excuse me, against the Zillion, because the Zillion slow there is so oppressive. Being able to proc Phase Rush to actually kite out of that if ganks do come in is a really, really big deal. And you'll also notice Ghost Flash in both of the top laners. Mm -hmm. So this is, I think, a pretty smart adaptation from Revenge. And I think the read is he is going to play Ghost, so I need to have Ghost to match or I will get run down. TP will not save you in those kind of situations. So he's going fully for the move speed basically set up here where he's going fleet. Uh, I would expect that he's actually playing, you know, all the move speed runes and I'll even check on that. You know, yeah, he's, he's going to be playing fleet. He's going to be playing time work, tonic and sustain and having ghosts to try to answer the ghost that comes out from Whippo, uh, which will be really interesting because Whippo also pretty standard range setup, you know, melee versus range. He goes D shield. He's actually going to be playing, you know, sustain uh, runes with the second wind in his secondary for resolve. And that alone, when you play second wind plus Doran shield, you negate most of the early game chip that rain champions can do. And it really allows you to kind of have a much smoother lane phase. I remember back when runes reforged first kind of came out and people were really hype on bone plating because yeah. it's ability to help you survive like burst or quick one V ones or whatever. But I was always thinking, I was like, wow, people keep taking bone plating in these range versus melee matchups. And it just sucks. Cause you can knock the bone plating off and get no value yeah. out of it. In those types of matchups, second wind feels so good to just resist the constant flow of damage that you're going to be exposed to and adapting to those situations i think is very important it's the same thing with phase rush and mid lane while airy is really good for enhancing the trading pattern you're already going to have phase rush enables an entirely new way to play because you're not automatically beaten by the slow absolutely the slow is going to be so problematic for him you know if a gank setup occurs slows coming through from glacial augment slows from potential of a trinity mirror chasing you down so he's going to be more set up for that it does make your laning phase a little bit weaker which yeah. you know you, you have to kind of weigh that right because you're saying all right i want to pressure the zillion in the early stages when the zillion is kind of really at its weakest so i'm giving up some power there but the other side of it is you're gonna be a lot safer come mid game. And, you know, to kind of circle back on, on that bone plating discussion that you had, yeah. I, I actually super agree that bone plating is kind of just defaulted to too much. And the way I generally look at it is second win versus versus poke and bone plating should be versus all in. You know, it still has exactly. its place and it has a lot of high value or champions that at least, you know, hit you multiple times in a trade, right? If you're playing against like a Jax or something and they're gonna jump in with Counter-Strike and hit you a couple times, you get a lot of value. But when you're playing against Jace and Graves and these types yeah. of champs, you just don't get enough out of it. The cooldown is so long and you're gonna get a lot more from second. The question I typically ask is how easily can he auto attack me whenever he feels like it? Yep. If he can constantly auto attack you, well, second win's probably gonna give you more value because otherwise he'll just auto attack the plating off every time it's ready. Yep. And that's sort of my barometer for it, but I only play Skyner, so what do I know? Anyway, bottom side, we got Han Sama and Ayla, level three versus the level two of their opponents. Remember both of these carries, we've seen so much of them throughout the current meta game, mm -hmm. like the scaling up, the hyper carry, three item power spike, all of that. Both of our supports do have that playmaking potential. You mentioned the, might, maybe we would see an aftershock from the Nautilus, but yep. there is no aftershock glacial. here. Glacial augment on both of them. Santorin is here in the bottom lane. Are we gonna get a dive out of this? TL, they're in position to maybe make it happen. Well, Let's see how they do. Santorin's gonna begin. Steps out of the way of the dredge line there, but he's gonna get rooted up. They throw out the lantern, they pull him back. They're gonna get Wild Turtles Flash in exchange for nothing. That's really well done, honestly. Destiny not able to actually connect on that hook onto Santorin, so they can't lock him in under the tower. So gonna be feeling pretty good about that. Uh, just doing a five camp clear, leaves up the blue for a delayed blue buff take here, then right down towards bot. He had already done the scuttle. And gonna be feeling like a, a right, really nice early path. And this is where it gets kind of awkward uh, for the Zillion. You know, it's one of those situations where you're not very precise in the early stages with without a lot of spell power. The bombs can sometimes just kind of mess up the last hit marks yeah. where you, you put things to awkward health points where you last hit the one target you want, but maybe your minions are finishing things off. And Bjergsen is really greeting this out. 
I don't know if they had eyes on Kiana. In fact, they probably did with that ward on bot side. Oh, and now Turtle with no flash left. Cleanse don't matter. The hook comes out. However, Destiny is at least able to buffer through some of that there with the dredge line, get himself away. But it is first blood for TL here very quick. That is huge, getting the early kill there. And it goes over onto Santorin, who just returns back to that bot side. Revenge trying to run through him. This is a little bit risky, but don't think you have enough damage early game to really threaten the kill. Got that uh, crit at the last hit, though. Yeah, always feels good. Well, unless you're the one against it, then you're kind of like, come on, dude, what the hell? Yeah, especially feels terrible when you're playing against it. And like level one, you know, they just pop ghosts and start walking at you, and you see the crit animation for a swing, and like, ah, it's one That's, of those games. It's just, it's because of the way Trinomir does it, too. He cares so little. He's dragging his sword on the <laughs> ground. He has a 1% so chance to get a pair of chop flowers. He's like, here you go, buddy. And that's the Trindamir experience. But Whippo's having a great time up here with it. Okay, 48 versus 45 CS. We've got a nice early rotation here from Destiny to see if maybe Whippo just gets a little bit too hyphy on it. Whippo does now have his ultimate. Over the wall comes Destiny right on top of a ward. And that means Whippo is plenty huh. safe. He swept the ward and then just ran. So I think they didn't have eyes on where Santorin is. Mm -hmm. I think he was a little bit nervous that, oh, I, if I clear we this. We don't win this 2 I don't have a flash. If Santorin's here, I'm actually just dead. So. Uh, he spots the ward, but isn't going to be able to clear it out, unfortunately, for him, heading straight back down towards the spot. Um, but TL is going to be really happy about the early stages of this. Whippo is going to actually end up positive in, in farm here. You can't dive him because he has six. He's going to be able to pick up at least most of this farm. And uh, Revenge could be in some trouble Whoa. here. He's looking for the chase down. It's Whippo starting it up there with the ghost. Whippo gets ulted by Revenge, but holds his own ulti. This is an important, important part of Trindamir play is not wasting that if you don't absolutely oh, They're trying to. to corral him for the for threatening a dive, or at least if you delay the base, at very least, you do actually make him lose some of these waves. This would be a tricky dive. They could go in for it. Okay, well, Nicely there's your done. endless rage. Whippo now will not Horses have that ability to get himself away. They get the TP instead, so no kill but mid lane teleport. So nicely done there from Immortals, at least getting Huey's himself that to match resource. This. But now bottom side, Power of Evil's coming down. They're predicting something bad to happen here. They have sniffed it out, and that means that TL will back away. And I've got to say, well handled by both teams. That was actually really intelligent stuff. If you go for the overdive, Trinomir's ult will buy him time for Bjergsen's TP to come through, and then you just die. Um, because, you know, Revenge is actually pretty low health at that point. They don't have super high damage. But by going in, forcing the ult immediately, if you don't get the response TP from Bjergsen, you just stand behind him, you wait for the ult to expire, and then it's a free kill on Whippo. So it forces out the TP, and at the same time, TL says, all right, you committed top, we'll take Dragon, threaten a bot, dive. But guess what? PoE had more pressure mid because Bjergsen had a TP away. So he utilizes that pressure to come down and cover the dive. And that's just good stuff from both teams. It's the back and forth that you want to see. It's the it's the you're playing chess, I'm playing checkers thing, except actually it's- You're no, both playing it's, chess. It's just a game of chess, yes. Yeah. So I, I love to see it. Total gold here on the side of your screen. You can see it's actually Santorin, the top of the gold chart right now because he got that first blood there on the Xin Zhao, working towards that Gore Drinker here nice and early. Does have his own level six ready to go here, provides him tons of tankiness in the fight. But the level six on Xerse is much more of a playmaking yeah. tool here in the jungle. And that's what I want to see is Immortals to make something happen happen with that now that it's online. Yep, absolutely. You can see, again, more emphasis on tier two boots for the move speed up in the top lane. Both top laners traded Ghost early on, and then you've got to keep up on the move speed. If you cannot kite out this Trinomir, you will lose those all in. So Tabby's rush here for Avenge. He knows it's physical damage jungler, physical damage top laner, both heavily reliant on the auto attacks. And really, it's going to be a very physical damage skewed comp from TL in general. Yeah, Bjergsen's oh, yeah. going to land some bombs, but it's not consistent damage. So Tabbies are very, very effective here. And on the other side, Whippo, Zeal, plus the tier two Zerker Greaves here. Again, the emphasis on move speed. It'll be interesting to see if he just sits on Zeal, which is really, really efficient early on, and then goes into Gale Force, or if he's actually going uh, to complete his Zeal item here and try to, you know, get that first upgraded. We'll make sure to keep an eye on it as things move forward. Santorin did start up the Rift Herald here, but Immortals was wise to what's going on. Spot, they will not allow him to complete this task. Instead, it's Immortals bringing up four players. 
to deal with this when the whole team's here. I mean, Revenge is hanging out in the top lane, but he can rotate Not over work. very easily. Bottom side, it's Whippo just going to town on that tier one turret. It's plates and plates and plates and plates. The Rift Arrow can get you a couple of plates, but Whippo's already cashing in with the Cersei's same low. value down can here at the bottom. Cersei's at 150 HP. Oh, no. Now they're coming in to try to deal with it. Now you got Destiny about to die. He's burning away. Ayla's at 200 HP now as well. Power of Evil. The bomb nearly next to Destiny, but not quite there. And that Rift Herald oh. Eye, it's not picked up by TL because they didn't kill the Herald, but they can zone Immortals away. So all they end up getting is the gold value of the Herald. Why Bwipo got, what was that, three, four plates? He got three three plates and about nine tenths of the last one. Bjergsen will have to run it out. It doesn't have ultimate mana here, so you always have to be a little bit careful. I have, uh, as a Zillion player myself, I've often greeted for the last bomb and ran out of mana and then died. Well, see, as a person who has played with Zillion before, I have spam pinged my Zillion. Why no ult me? And then <laughs> they he- ping their mana And 100%. then he pings his mana that, hey, dude, I had 30 mana. What are you doing? So, hey, we've both been a part of that same situation. Yeah. Just uh, slightly different viewpoints. Yep. Bottom side here, though, Whippo's viewpoint is sunshine and rainbows, my yeah. friend. This Trindamir is going to town and scaling up. I mean, it's, it's, it's rough because even if Immortals got that, I don't think it's worth it. You know, the expected value is two and a half plates or two plates, right? So if you can get a kill and then a dive and a full tower with the Herald, then it becomes worthwhile. But when you're giving up a guaranteed three to four plates to Trindamir, that is so tough to really expect to get that much back uh, that it becomes worthwhile. The lane swap is still in effect here. Just bot lanes chilling top right now. But I do think they're going to move down, I would assume, towards this dragon. Uh, to try to set up for that. TL already got the first one, would love to grab an early second. Makes me so glad that we're out of the world where lane swap was meta. Me too. I think Bupo could try to look for this. I mean, if he stays around, there, there is the opportunity uh, with that ghost in a long lane, but everyone moving over towards Bjergsen here, and they'll have to have 100 to 0 pretty quick. Bjergsen just flashes instead. Destiny's Flash traded away for Bjergsen's, and that means that Bjergsen is not even going to take any damage from this. He still has the ulti up. They're still able to use that as Revenge just backs away. Remember, Mocking Shout is known heavily for the slow that happens as long as your back is turned to him, but it is also a massive attack damage reduction. Mm -hmm. It is very powerful against any AD themed champion. Yep, 20 AD at rank one goes all the way up to 80. And the ultimate rank up is really poor. That's something that, that most people know. Generally, you actually skill up your first rank, your ulti, and then you don't skill it up it's anymore until exactly the end of the game. Uh, because you just do get more out of that, that 80 reduction, you know? Uh, especially towards those later stages. But even early on, when people are sitting at like, you know, 100 and whatever AD, 20 is a pretty significant reduction to that. And it's one of those things that's kind of sometimes hidden power in some of these abilities. The way I think about it is a long sword is 10 AD and it's 350 gold. Minus so, 700. Yeah, level one mocking shout is two long swords worth of gold. That is so much. When you look at the overall advantage that Team Liquid has, it's 2,000 gold. You have, what is that, three enemy targets that have attack damage yep. team champions? If you hit them all with a mocking shout in the middle of a fight, well, hey, we just doubled our gold advantage effectively. Yep, pretty high value. And Bwipo, question answered. So it is just a zeal for the laning phase, and then he's in towards the Gale Force. This is a build that I am definitely more of a fan of. Um, people were kind of discovering just the power of zeal as a laning item in general. You were seeing it a ton and when people were doing a ton of, of the lethal tempo Yone top, people were just like rushing Zeal, and, and it was so effective for the landing phase. A lot of Yasuo's do it these days. Some Trinomiros really do place a lot of value on it. It does, of course, slow down the first completed item, and Gale Force active is so powerful. So it's kind of an argument on both sides, but in this case, Quipo going for that gold efficiency, and they have taken down the tower bot, so Hansam, I believe, collecting a lot of that gold. Yeah, he has 1K in his pockets, so he's pretty rich. Whippo's pretty rich. Bjergsen's kind of just chilling farming. You got yeah. past the early stages on Zillion. You're going to be feeling good. Whippo not anywhere near down here. Revenge is trying to look for something here on Hans. He popped the ghost going for it. My brain immediately just thought Trindamir as soon as I heard ghost. That's how unusual <laughs> ghost on Graves is. I said Whippo and I was like, wait a second. That's not who the ghost is. A man with a shotgun running fast is scary, to be fair. Right, but I mean, this isn't normally the type of game where we have to think about, oh, no, the shotgun guy's <laughs> sprinting at me. That's a whole different genre. But that's also the only way that I ever learned how to play Valorant. You just buy Bucky every round and yeah, run out of Yeah, hide in the corner. There's a reason I'm not very good at that game. <laughs> anyway, we've still got ourselves a very Team Liquid favorite game. So the question I want to pose to you right now is, Dale, as we're 14 minutes in, as the plates are now gone, 
What specifically is the angle for Immortals here to make sure this doesn't just turn into a slow bleed out against Liquid? I mean, I think they're going to have to probably fight it at this, at this next Dragon, right? It's not going to be about side lane for them. I do think that Trinimir is going to outscale Graves no matter what build Graves goes for. He's not going to be able to continue in that 1v1. So it's, it's finding setup early around the Dragon and finding an AoE engage. The AoE is critical because Zillion answers the solo target picks, right? So you yeah. need to find that multi-man Kiana ult. You need to find an early Zillion ult on an unideal target, but we're going to see potentially a rundown here. Remember, Revenge has no ghost. Well, he does have buddies, though, and buddies are worth a lot in League of Legends. Yeah, they're not even ghosts. They're real people. Yeah. They're alive. Very, very helpful stuff there, but now it's Power of Evil, uh -oh. who is under pressure. Santorin waits until after Power of Evil has already flashed, then he charges ever so audaciously to take him out. 2-0, Team Liquid. So you can see the difference. Power of Evil didn't have Ghost, but he is a Ghost, you know? There's, there's some different some different <laughs> permutations here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do well. And now Ayla is a Ghost. I'm Immortals sorry, I broke you with the terrible joke. Get themselves joke. back into the game here. They're grabbing two kills. Santorin jumps in, trying to get anything back, but instead he's only going to give away another. He will at least take Wild Turtle down with the burn from the challenging smite. But that was big for Immortal. That was, getting a couple of kills there, flexing a little bit of muscle around that mid lane. Getting the shutdown on Santorin as well is pretty big. Turtle does go down, but he gets the kills. They get a kill on Kiana as well. So gonna be feeling better about their chances. We can see this one more time. As Santorin came around the side, but Cersei just preempts it. Goes straight in. When the two is collapsing on the three, the three go for the two. They don't wait for Santorin to show up. Really well done here. And then Santorin going in to try to bail out Hans. Not quite able to do it, though. Just ends up giving up his own life. Yes, he takes down Turtle, but it's not worthwhile because he's giving up his three kill shutdown. And I mean, when you're on a champion like Xin Zhao, once you go in, you don't really get out. Yeah. It's either unless they... you kill them and you walk out. Right. Exactly. They <laughs> die or you die. That's yeah. the only way out. It's honorable it's not duel. Like, it's not like you have these escape mechanisms. A it's not like you champions. have mobility to get away. I mean, it's all in at that point. So at least he got one. He is three and one. All of the kill money for Team Liquid is on Santorin, which all things considered, you're happy about if you're on Immortals because yeah. you don't want the Trindamir and the Jinx getting accelerated. Absolutely. Trinity, though, accelerating himself. He has a farm bounty, which uh, kind of just shows he's ahead of the pace of the game. You know, he's up at 190 CS quietly at 17 minutes. You know, that is, is, is rare to see from a top laner. That means generally you're farming incredibly well, but also probably taking some stacked waves, stealing away some jungle camps, that type of thing. And that's something Trinity can be so strong with because junglers cannot 1v1 this champion. So when he comes in, he steals your Krugs. He comes in, he steals your Gromp. Unless you have assistance there, you often cannot combat it. Yeah. So Trinibir just takes the push, goes into your jungle, takes away camps. And the itemization's looking good too. With the Gale Force completed, still sitting on the Zeal, Cape plus Longsword tells me probably Essence Reaver is gonna be the next item built and completed yeah. here. And Essence Reaver is so scary because remember, like as he's critting, he's reducing the cooldown on his E. It's pretty easy for him, if he's free hitting you, to get a lot of procs on that Essence Reaver spell. Oh, uh, Power of Evil, no flash, and he's looking like he's going down. Oh, no, he's not long for this world, man. Victor in a side lane, and now Destiny's just going to be the icing on the cake. Can he get away? He tries to flash over the wall. Spider-Man. Oh, do you have a way home? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Okay. All right. I wasn't expecting that to I work. didn't see the movie. I haven't seen the movie either. No way home. Good. I heard it's really good. Yeah, it is good. Yeah, great movie. I'll have there to go, go check that out sometime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds delightful. Maybe we should make an afternoon of it. Yeah, that would be great. We'll, have to, right. we'll have to coordinate our days off or something. <laughs> but uh, right now, no days off for the people on the Rift, especially not Immortals, who will now have to deal with a Soul Point Team yeah. Liquid for the rest of the game it's, four it's, minutes from now. It's getting really tough, I think, already for Immortals. The gold lead is not massive, but the game state is so heavily in their favor. TL are just pushing out sides really, really effectively, and then they're using those pushed out waves to force a response from a champion that's not really suited to play inside. That is the Victor. Victor answers side twice in a row. He's gotten picked off by the Zillion and the Zin. He's so exposed in these lanes. It becomes very, very dangerous for him. If you give over Mountain Soul this early on as well, well, you're looking at upfront insta-kills for this kind of a composition. When you have Kiana Graves, you want to get that burst skill that becomes oh, yeah. so much more difficult with all the flat resistances that are coming from this, plus the Mountain Soul Shield, that is negating a lot of the lethality that we're seeing purchased up by both the Graves 
as well as Azurse, and even Turtle is gonna go collect her. So the flat armor is actually a big deal. Revenge will clear out this wave topside before Bwipo is able to claim the turret, but we're still looking at almost a 40 CS lead for Bwipo over his counterpart in Revenge. Revenge is going for the Eclipse here on the Graves. I remember back during lock-in, I believe it was Jat talking about how he liked Eclipse on Graves if he feels like the Immortal Shield Bow is not going to protect you from a death anyway. Yeah. Right? He was talking about how if it's not going to matter anyway, and it's more about these skirmishy situations, hey, give me the Eclipse, let's do that. So that's the approach we're seeing out of Revenge here. And against low armor targets, Lethality is just super effective. Like, he has such right. a strong burst pattern. You know, Q Flash, R, etc. The Destiny, though, oh. caught out. He has no Flash from the earlier skirmish. He has Zersei right behind him, and oh. Zersei just pops Hans. Nicely done there. But now what happens in the rest Revenge of the fight? Here. Turtle is going to get pulled right on back. He's in trouble. Santorin going after the 80 carry, and he finds him. Ayla tries to flash over the wall and stay alive. He pulls Santorin away to safety. And here comes Bwipo. He spins over the wall and flashes right back over to chase Revenge. He will not survive. Oh, man, it looked all right there at the start for Immortals as Xersei found the kill, but TL turns it around. Fights across the map there as Power of Evil and Bjergsen were going back and forth. They traded ults, they traded flashes. Bjergsen ends up having to run away there. The insta-kill on to Hans made you think it was going to go heavily in the favor of Immortals, but they spend a lot of resources to get that kill. Zinn, as well as Trindamir, are less cooldown reliant. They get in that fight, they scrap it up. We can watch this one more time. TL, get the jump, or so they think, but you pull Hans in, and he just gets immediately ulted by the Nautilus, flashed out there, caught by the edge of the ulti from Zerse, straight in, instant deletion. And then Turtle has the cleanse, but he's just getting chased down. He tries to Gale Force to safety. He uses the Red Gun ult for the heal, but Santorin is so damn tanky there, kiting out Great Lantern from Ayla, and as the Trinomir arrives, there's no escaping. Everything from Ayla there was awesome. I must praise this support play. Ugh. The hooks onto the valuable targets, getting the cleanse out of Turtle, yeah. setting up the kill onto him, stop watching to prevent his own death, throwing the lantern back to be able to save his teammate as well. Beautiful thresh. Point. And I've got to say, it's kind of a funny way to word it, and I mean no disrespect to Ayla, but it, it's so much credit to Ayla that people aren't talking about the fact that Core JJ is missing. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like, that is so impressive. You know, he has really shown up, I think, very well for this team. Yes, they did lose their game yesterday, but they were great in lock-in. Ayla has made you feel that this is an incredible team, you know, even without potentially the best player in the league in Core JJ. And I think he has really been stepping up. Great stuff from him. TL setting up for this potential soul here. Immortals are in the area, and Xerxes trying to threaten the flank, but you can't 1v1 against this training bear, so he's got to run. Level 15 versus level 11. Oh, no. oh, Revenge steps on top of the bombs, but he's looking to contribute whatever damage he can find. Whippo is nearly dead, but the Undying Rage keeps him alive. Turtle tries to get something back out of it, but Turtle's going to be blown up. Shut down over onto Santorin, however. One for one here in the bottom side, River Fight. Yeah, Trindamir does pop the ulti early, but Turtle just kind of got baited trying to go in that deep. Even if you kill him off, that's a Trindamir who can't re-enter the fight without ulti. You go in, you give up your life for that is definitely not worthwhile. At the same time, Revenge has healed back up to full here. So I think the dragon is going to be theirs. It looks like they're starting it up. Uh, they're not really committed to it. Remember, Zerse only has about 300 HP here. That dragon is hurting him no as well. On the other side. There's no smite. Santorin's still dead, so the Drake will be secured. The soul will be stopped. That was massive for Immortals. That was huge for them, and it almost went so bad as it looked like a betrayal on the blast cone there. Revenge, I think, got knocked into TL by someone triggering that blast cone. And it was really because Immortals did a good job actually kiting out the Trindamir again, kind of showcasing the weakness of the Trindamir in the 5v5. He does have the Quick Blades completed, so it's the same build as we saw last time. We can watch this one more time. Who actually hit that? Was that Cersei? I think Cersei did hit it to try to knock himself out. But unfortunately for Revenge, Revenge dashed over the wall, got immediately hit, knocks back in, takes almost all of his health there. Then they're kiting back onto Whippo. Even if you kill him off there as Turtle, Zillion ulti is available. Zillion ulti is there. So Turtle, I think, losing track of the situation, tries to get aggressive, gets punished for it big time. But at least they do come out with the dragon. They stop that soul. Yep. That's the name of the game. That was the most important thing. 
and that got accomplished. Still almost a 3,000 gold for Liquid. Still soul point for Liquid, but it is not a lost game. Super Mega Death Rocket used to scout out a little bit, just see what's going on around Baron, see if it finds anybody else making movements around that pit. Look at they're, they're gonna try to go for a dive here, almost guaranteed. Oh, the perfect placement on Everfrost as Revenge tries to move through it. He still gets rooted, and Bwipo picks up the kill. Undying Rage means no return one there, and Bjergsen and Bwipo are still pushing. Man, that was like a mad life Everfrost right there. The prediction on so the good. dash drops the Everfrost where he knows he needs to go. There's only one way out for Revenge, and it's back towards the tower. So even if Revenge steps forward to actually dodge that, you're still dead because you're walking into the Trindomir. So that pretty much just has him completely cut off of any escape there. Really nice side lane play. TL sent two to the sides. They find the kill on Revenge. And now they have unlocked themselves on the map. Again, Power Beaver is pulled to that side lane. He has got to respond to that. And it's incredibly difficult for him to do so safely. Beautiful, beautiful stuff there from Bjergsen. The, there are so many conversations around Bjergsen coming back. You know, yeah. he, was, he was a coach for a year. How good is he going to be? The man is just good at League he of just Legends. He has it, man. Some, it's like a bike. some people got it, and some people don't got it. And Bjergsen's got it, damn it. Uh, he's got it in spades. He's been looking really, really good, I think, answering all critics, answering all questions about how he would be you know, coming into the league again. You know, I, I thought he would get there, but I thought it would take him some time. And really, from the word go, Bjergsen has been performing for TL, making it look like a really strong pickup for them. And Obviously a very, very strong squad. They already won lock-in. They're looking really, really strong in 2022. Well, we've got the Navori Quick Blades for Bwipo. So that means if he's able to find those hits, man, he will just never stop chasing after you. Hook coming out from Ayla, finds Destiny. Santorin's still here in the middle of everybody, uses the ulti to try to keep himself healthy, but everybody's inside the range. He continues going forward. First kill over onto Destiny, and Han Sama is able to free fire. Power of Evil's your next target. Revenge trying to get himself away as Turtle's able to Turtle. join up here for the fight. Double kill back over to Hans. Team Liquid has lost their support, but that is all. They're looking to find the kill on Revenge next, and they got him. Santorin, Bjergsen, Hans, still ready to go. No ulti on Bjergsen. Knock, knock, knock. Who's that? It's Blippo! Team Liquid. Ace for one. Starts in a 4v5 TL. Make it take so long. Blippo had time to go mid, kill the tier two tower, get half the damage on the inhibitor tower, then join the team here. Look at where this started. Blippo has no TP. Power of Evil is teleporting in. TL, make the call, play it slow. Buy time here, Zillion arrives. Santorin is buying so much time in the front line, they can't commit too much damage to him because Zillion is there for the revive. They peel back off him, but then you're ignoring the fact that Santorin can get so much damage done here. Turtle comes around, the instant kill onto Ayla makes you think maybe it can go their way, but then you look at the mini-map, and this man is a running. He's coming. Chugga, 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 <laughs> And he just goes in. Whippo ran across the whole country to get here, but he finally made it. And man, Team Liquid, they're 10,000 gold up. They got the Baron. 4,182 damage dealt by Santorin. Woo. I love watching this guy play. Yeah, Bwipo getting his steps in. Santorin getting the damage in. TL looking strong. They're going for a pick, though. Here we go. Destiny tries to start it off. Hansama's going to be at 40%. Destiny now the They're target. Hunting. Santorin looking for him. Bjergsen's bomb going to find the kill. Revenge stuck in the Krug pit. Turtle stuck in the middle of Team Liquid. The resurrection comes through, and Hansama's back to full HP, Immortals have their back against the wall, and Team Liquid is back in familiar territory at the enemy inhibitor turrets. They are pushing, man. You cannot test Bjergsen on these ultis. Turtle flashing in, trying to kill off Hans before Bjergsen can react, but of course he is equal to the task. They are pushing, and they are looking to close this one out. They'll pad the stats a little bit more as they pick up one kill, make it two. Will it be three? Revenge is stunned up nice and tidy, done and dusted. Team Liquid might just get the whole ace here. They find the chompers. Destiny, yeah, he's a golden statue, but that's just going to be a trophy for TL at this point. They're all the way on to the Nexus itself. GG right at 29 minutes. Team Liquid takes him down.
clean game here from TL, showcasing another look with the Trinimir top. Whippo has just been such a treat to watch this season. And you got to give so much credit to Santorin, who I, I feel like he has been on fire. He's been playing some of the best League of Legends of his career. There was criticisms being levied towards him over the last couple of years where he was struggling with some of his health problems. He wasn't performing to the level that you expected, but his pathing has been so good. He's up in farm. He's forcing Flash instantaneously on Turtle right off the bat. He's repeat ganking him, still keeping up his tempo in the jungle, taking away the early objectives that really are kind of limiting the options of Immortals. And it just feels like he's always right place, right time. His synergy with Bjergsen has been so good. You know what I think it was? I think it was Core JJ tweeting about River saying, man, feels good to see a <laughs> good jungler you. play. That just lit a fire under Santorin, and now the rest of the LCS is burning. The yeah. band is so good in the jungle. And Team Liquid, just a well-oiled machine, getting things done, applying the pressure there in the bottom lane nice and early, setting it up so Turtle has no flash, return play to get him there, setting themselves up with the yep. dragon, so they were always able to force Immortals to have to come and try to answer that. Just really good stuff, and there's still... No answer in the LCS. We got a whole big book of stuff, but on none of them pages is there an answer for Bjergsen Zillion. Yep, it's tough. He's undefeated now. Four four games, four wins. People might start banning it, even though people are just not playing this champion globally. He is so good on it. And really, unless you can punish him early game, unless you can bring something out that really pounds this Zillion into the ground and makes it irrelevant he is going to get incredible value in the later stages of the game. He showed it time and time again. He knows the ins and outs of this champion. He plays it perfectly. The Everfrost bot lane, as funny as it is to point that to, was... like that was just so clean. And it's, it's one of those things that you're like, okay, you know this champion. And even to how quick he is on the reses, he's, he's clearly thinking, and you can tell that his cursor is actually on the champions in advance of when he needs to ult them, right? Yep. Because when Turtle is flashing forward for that kill on Hans, it's an, it's an instantaneous yeah. ult, right? And in a lot of these situations, Maple. he's always on point with that. He's thinking two steps ahead. Who would you be looking to kill? Well, I'm already ready to ult this person. Right. It's all about not just playing your champion how you think it should be played, but understanding what everybody else is going to do and being able to just always remain ahead. The man is one of the best for a reason. Our lock-in champs claimed their first win in spring, and now we're joined.